You know, Bud, I make some really good coffee. I could smell it brewing. I'm glad you came back. I mean, I'm glad you don't drink it because I can have it all for myself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this installation has gone really well. One of the last things I'm doing here is torquing the manifold, and that's real important so we don't have an exhaust leak. You've got to start from the center, work your way out. 50 to 55 foot pounds, but just follow the instructions. And that's all in the instructions. That's great. You know, and they bolt on everything at ATS. You know, they, they, they build it, they bolt it on because they got their big install shop. It's a great place out there. I can't believe that they have that much under one roof. And I can't believe that they cast everything. They have their own foundry. It's been a long time since I've been to a foundry in the forge. And, you know, the interesting thing is they, they recycle the cast iron, the aluminum, even recycle the waste oil out of their install shop when they, you know, building transmissions. That's what runs that uh, Cummins triple turbo on the, D on the dyno. Amazing. Yeah, it really is. And, of course, you know, this setup here is easy to put on. It builds engine power, engine efficiency, and lowers the exhaust gas temperature. And that's really critical. When you can make more power and less EGT, you know it's working right. And to get to this point, it was real easy. You know, it took all the old parts off. Be sure you save everything. You're going to need some of these parts when they go back on. Now, I put the new turbo on, and with that, you've got to clock this turbo. Clocking means we have to make sure that everything aligns. That's from the oil line to where it bolts up to the exhaust manifold to where the, uh, the, the output hose goes off. Started here with this back clamp, got it tight, just enough that I could spin the turbo. Make sure that all your clocking bolts are loose so you can slide everything else. Now, before you go ahead and put your oil line on, take a tip here and put some oil down inside the turbocharger. That way, when you fire the baby up, it's not going to have dry seals or dry bushings or bearings and you won't hurt the turbocharger. And then of course you have to have the tube coming off that goes to your intercooler and that was the next thing I put on. But I already had all of the other tubes in place and had the clamps in so that I could make sure that that was aligned and properly clocked. Once you get that in place, now you can go back and start to, to tighten up all your clocking bolts. You also have an oil return line and be sure that it's in, tightened up and the gasket's in place. Then it's just as simple as what we're doing right now, finishing the manifold. Have a couple more bolts to finish, and that's the bolts that go between the manifold and the turbo. And I left them loose purposely because we wanted to make sure that everything else was tightened in place. And of course, you know, on these big tubes that connect you to the uh, intercooler, make sure those clamps are torqued properly because if they blow up, and they will, uh, you won't have any engine power at all. We have to take a break right now. When we come back, we'll see you in the parts room. And when we get back, we're going to show you how to bolt on 10 to 20 horsepower and 20 to 38 foot-pounds of torque, and it's not electronic, so stick around.